You are listening to the top-ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by our audience. But the way we open the episode is with fun conversation. We talk about current events and studies and things that are interesting to us. Today's intro portion was about 41 minutes long. After that, we got into answering the fitness questions. Let me give you a quick rundown. So if you want to fast forward to your favorite part, you can totally do that. We open up by talking about uh, aged nut cheeses. Uh, oh, this is <laughs> just who doesn't like a good nut cheese. Introducing us to that. Then Adam brought up our number one Black Friday sale product. It was our Mir cups, um, and we still have some left over. I think we still have some Cup Zero mugs, um, but they're in the color of blue. Here's what you do, and you can get a discount by using our code. Go to mir.com. That's m i i r dot com forward slash mind pump, and then use the code mind pump get twenty five percent off your first order. Then I talked about more weird uh, regulations going on in the country. Apparently in Ohio, wrestlers can wrestle, but they can't shake hands. Ugh, just like uh, my brain scrambling. Yeah, COVID only spreads by shaking hands, apparently. Yeah. Um, then I talk about the mayor of Austin telling people not to travel while he's in Cabo. What a great do guy. Do as I say, not as I do. He's awesome. Adam brought up a super boring show on Netflix called Queen's Gambit, and then we talk about something fun, The Mandalorian. By the way, spoiler alert, we talk all about The Mandalorian, so yeah. you might want to fast forward that no part. No hate, fast forward. Then we talk about something that is going to be in the COVID vaccine called Lucifer Ace. <laughs> it's kind of interesting that they named it that. Yeah, th this is actually true. Yeah, this is a real thing. Uh, then we talk about fans only. Uh, this company is worth $2 billion. It's blowing up right now. Then we talk about the Mayweather Logan Paul fight. It's actually happening, ladies and gentlemen. Face palm. Boxing is jumping the shark. Yes. Uh, which leads me to talk about a cool fight league called X Arm. This is arm wrestling with punches and kicks involved. Yeah, let's move over there. Really interesting. Then we talked about Airbnb going public soon. Interesting company you might want to look up. Then we talked about Viore. This is a company that we work with that makes some of the best looking athleisure wear clothes you'll find anywhere. Comfortable, stylish lifetime guarantee, and because you listen to Mind Pump, you get 25% off. The best. Here's what you do. Go to vioriclothing.com. That's V-U-O-R-I clothing.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code MP25 for 25% off. <gasps> then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know what, what we have advice for in terms of a quick and dirty warm-up. So quick and dirty warm-up. the quick and dirty. Right before you start your workout. What's a good one? The next question, this person says, when's a good time to use a lifting belt? And when should you not use a lifting belt? The third question, this person wants to know what the optimal way is to rest in between sets. Resting in between, in between sets is very important for your results. So we talk about the best ways to do that. And the final question, this person wants to know, when we were trainers, what was our niche? What was our niche? Also, you know, mind pump uh, is comprised of personal trainers. Uh, myself, Adam, and Justin were trainers for over 20 years. And one thing that we do better than anything else, even better than podcasting, is write workouts. We're expert workout programmers. And we've designed quite a few workouts. All of them are called MAPS, but there's different MAPS programs for different goals and different people. These are legit workouts, okay? They're not just workouts designed to make you sweat or sore. They're actually programmed properly to get your body to respond to get your body to adapt, to build muscle, strength, to boost your metabolism, to burn body fat, okay? Check out these programs. They're not your normal Instagram fitness celebrity crap workouts. Again, these are legit workouts that actually work. Go to mapsfitnessproducts.com, look at the different workouts, find the one that works best for you, sign up, Follow the program for a full month. If it doesn't blow your mind, return it for a full refund. Again, you can find out more about all of our MAPS workouts at mapsfitnessproducts.com. What do you guys think was the number one thing that we sold over uh, Black Big Black Friday? Sale? Oh, Justin's <laughs> naked pictures. Wow, those flew off the shelves. So. Yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. That was a big file we you had to download, to. by the way. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> yeah. The, the, um, all the mirror cups flew. Oh, wow. Yeah. Finally, uh, your uh, first your uh, first cup doesn't count. What's it? Yeah, cup zero. Cup, cup zero. zero. Yeah, those did really well. Well, they have cool colors uh, that they picked. Uh, you know, to kind of revamp those. I was excited about that. I got one for Courtney. You know what those mirror cups are really valuable for? What's that? The uh, the temperature contrast of our damn studio. 
<laughs> oh, I know, right? Yeah, this is like, okay, so if you're, ever, if you're listening right now and you ever become a guest on Mind Pump, here's what you'll notice. Outside the studio, freezing. Inside the studio, balls. Hot as balls. So outside freezing, inside. Very, very so hot balls. Literally, it's just a, one door. And the opposite is true in the summertime. And in the summer, we switch it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, we're, we're training our immune systems. <laughs> Yeah. Apparently on accident. I it's like stop. muscle confusion, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I with temperature. Yeah, I'm like sweating that. like crazy right now, but then I came in here in a jacket yeah. or whatever. I saw you guys, I saw you were you were last or was Doug hasn't got his up there actually. For Tr- what? I did the post on the Christmas trees in the forum. Oh, oh yeah, I did post mine up Doug there. Doug doesn't have a Christmas tree. Oh, you the Grinch, you yeah. fucking Grinch. He doesn't believe in he Christmas. He doesn't celebrate. Wow. It. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I have a tree. Oh, you are, okay. <laughs> Do you really? How come you didn't? Post yeah, it's a really nice one actually. I, I bought a noble fir this year. Oh. I usually got the Douglas fir, you okay. know, for obvious reasons. But yeah. I don't know what the obvious reasons are. Just, My name's, name's Doug. Douglas. Yeah. You dummy. Oh. <laughs> Doug, Doug felt. Yeah. <laughs> Oh god! But I feel noble this yeah, year. Yeah, you felt it's, regal. Yeah. Huh? yeah, yeah. You know, I you know why I didn't know because he was talking to you, Adam, and you know so much about these trees. I remember last year <laughs> you were breaking down all the Christmas trees. I'm like, I never knew. It. <laughs> why does he know so much about uh, Christmas trees? I don't know why. He knows all know. the different he buys ones. like three of them for his house. My That's favorite why. Christmas tree posted in the forum was the guy who decorated his weed plant. Did you see oh, that? Oh, that was so good. <laughs> yes, no, he wins. <laughs> he put lights around no, his, he wins. his that weed was, bush. That was the best yeah. one for oh, sure. That's a good you, one. We had some, you know, it's so so mind pump-esque, right, that we have some of these nerds in here. We had somebody who had the uh, Zelda tree. Then we had another one that had the Mar- oh, wow. the Mario star on top. Oh, that's great. Oh, well, that's so rad. That's a good time. Yeah. So we put notes up on the screen sometimes for our episodes, and I can I, I want to know what aged nut cheese is. Yeah, is so, that you, Justin? Yeah, bro. <laughs> I figure. He posted, <laughs> he posted his story. Yeah. What is it? I yeah. did. So, okay. I went to my parents' house and I was picking my kids up. They watched them for one of the nights of the weekend. Courtney and I got a date. <laughs> Everything was great. Uh, come over there. My mom always likes to leave me with stuff that, like, I don't know. She just acquires, like, food a lot. She knows that, like, I eat gluten free a lot. And so she's always looking for these, like, disgusting packaged food that say gluten free. Like, here, you like this stuff. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, I don't Just because it says gluten free. Usually just goes right into the trash, yeah. you know, when I get home. Uh, but yeah, there was no exception with this. I, I actually tried this cheese. It's a cheese. It's called, uh, uh, uh was it age, aged? Nut cheese. So it's basically like nut uh, instead of dairy. There's no dairy and it's nut cheese. But I was like, nut cheese? <laughs> just like, just wait, wait, wait. There's no dairy in it. It's There's made no with, dairy. It's, it's made, made with, with nuts. nuts. You can make cheese without dairy? That's I didn't what know, I was like. I didn't even know that was possible. Oh, my God. And so I had to try it. And you can do anything. It was so disgusting. It was like... It, it had the consistency of like if you hardened some kind of a butter, you know, like because you know how nuts you're going to make like a peanut butter. So imagine like freezing that so you can get it to kind of get the consistency of like kind of a sliced cheese and then it just dissolves sort of in your mouth uh. and then it's got a cheese aftertaste. And I was just like, wow, you, I'm so how, confused. How well does your mom know you? Like you're a cheese fanatic. It's gluten you can't eat. Why would she give you that? Dude, I, I can't make sense out of it. <laughs> Jeez, I didn't did even you, know that existed. Did I didn't you know taste that. It? I did. That's what I was trying to describe. It's it's weird. It's like it just it, it confuses you. Yeah, they probably took uh, nut butter and then fermented it. Yeah, and then that is that it right there. Yeah. Oh, what is but, that? I mean, it, it, hands down, this this has the worst name of all time, dude. Who wants like? Hey, bro, can you pass me some nut cheese? No. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah. If a guy Let ever me gobble asks, up that nut cheese. I don't know about you guys, but if any of my friends ever said that, it's a no. Yeah. <laughs> hard no. That's a hard pass. Dis- uh, yeah. Disgusting. I've tried fake cheese before, and uh, it's terrible. There's no fake cheese I've ever had that tastes like real cheese. And like the- Velveeta? Oh, well, that's different. Yeah, yeah Velveeta's. Yeah, but Velveeta, they hit the, the <laughs> they hit the process no. miracle. With it's that, like though. plastic, dude. Yeah, but you eat it's that good on for fondue. You eat that on nachos, though. Uh, oh my yeah. god, I, I, I it's good for fondue. Do. Yeah, you yeah. you guys ate Velveeta like snob. crazy, right, Adam? Of course, they. You know, you get that at like the. Uh, you know the what are those called? I don't even remember what we used to call when you go to the. Um, you wait in line, you get free free groceries and free food, and so that Velveeta cheese is like commonly in there. Really? Yeah. And yeah. now it came in like a block. You know, it came in. Yeah, it came in a, bo- a blue box. I remember a blue box like this, and it like like it looks like a little mini fire log. Yeah. And what do you do? You just slice it. Well, we would we used it for like a fondue. My mom used to always make a fondue out of it. So you just get a pot, heat it up in there. Yeah, yeah. And you dip your bread in it. 
super healthy. She has like hard yeah. oil. <laughs> and that's yeah. dinner? Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> we got some uh, bread and some cheese. Oh my God, dude. Yeah. Dip think, it in there. I Gross. Think, I think back to like some of our, like our, health, <laughs> our, our healthy meals were like fried fried chicken and mashed potatoes and gravy was like our healthy meals. That's actually delicious. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, that's one of the best yeah, tasting no, things. Yeah, to get down for sure. That's pretty damn good. Hey, um, so things are getting kind of weird out there. Did you guys hear about the rules in Ohio for wrestlers? What? what? Okay. Oh, I did Here's the, hear this. See, this is the shit that you makes- You can wrestle, but you can't shake their hand afterwards. This is- It's <laughs> this- almost as ridiculous when I see the- Come on, When I see the, ma- the married couples walking by themselves, like their dog, both wearing their masks. Oh. And, like, and then they to pretend to kiss with their well, stupid masks. I'm like, wait, I, this, this doesn't make sense to me. You're all by yourself. There's nobody within 100 yards of you. You're walking yeah. your dogs together. There's two of you. You obviously are a married couple, like holding hands and stuff like that, and you're both wearing masks. It doesn't make any sense to me. The people uh, who wear masks they, is just they, illog- The whole Ill- environment is riddled with Ill- illogical thoughts. It's insane. People who wear masks by themselves uh, probably wear condoms when they jerk off. It's the same strategy. Yeah. Like you're not protecting <laughs> anybody or oh, yourself. Totally. I don't get it. But no, this this highlights the insanity of the rules, I wish they would be more consistent because the inconsistencies is what makes people not follow any of them. You're wrestling. Last time I checked, wrestling was uh, touching a lot of grabbing and touching. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. My face is on your ass and your or your face and we're sweating on each other. Oh, Don't yeah. shake hands though. No. We can't shake any other Don't hands. Don't do that. That's, yeah. yeah, that's how you get it. Did you guys see the Austin mayor getting big in, uh, in hot water? No. He was. <laughs> I'm over watching news. Oh, no, this is great. This Ugh. has been dra- I'm seriously going mental over this. Oh, stuff. you'll love this one, Justin. Okay. So he great. filmed like he was talking to the people of Austin, and he's like, "Hey, you know, don't travel this holiday season. It's very dangerous. Everybody stay home." Filming it from Cabo. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys stay right there. Was okay. It, was it obvious, or did somebody like call him out? No, like, he got called did- out. Oh my god. And then he apologized later. Really? Yeah, he was in Cabo. This is so stupid. There's so many examples. That's of that. epic. The, 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 the most, like, the hardest governors, mayors, like, they're not doing any of these rules. Yeah, dude, look at him. That's his, that's his video. He was in Cabo while he was recording the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> what a piece of shit. I know. What I know. a massive piece of shit. It's just hypocrisy I, what, so what everywhere. I, what I don't understand is if you're doing something like that, right, or if, like, you're Gavin and you have the, like, why even come out and even say anything? Like, why not just keep your mouth shut? Because they like, want to sound self-righteous. They, they want to sound like they have everybody's, like, well intentions. Where's the common sense in that, though? Tell me, okay, so you're 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 told, maybe you're told, right? Maybe someone calls you up and says, hey, you know, you need to... You need the to, New World Order. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. lizard people yeah, call. Yeah, the lizard people, lizard people, people call and say, you need to put this out there, and you're like, fuck, I'm in Cabo right now. This is not a good time. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's <laughs> like, don't you? Doesn't that like it's cross your convenient? Doesn't that cross your mind? Uh, yeah. No, it doesn't. Uh, I mean, couldn't he have pre-recorded it? You know right. I mean? Right. Exactly. You, come or on. Change the background what, or something. What a complete, green screen it. Yeah, what exactly. A complete moron. No, it's just it's infuriating. It's completely infuriating. I'm sorry. <clears throat> you got it. It's like imagine like you're telling your kid. You're like, hey, man, don't do drugs, and you're doing drugs at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you're mainlining over there in the corner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not a good example. Hey, all. I watched uh, Doug. Doug always has the best recommendations, so when you guys leave work, Doug and I sit and talk about like TV shows. That you we guys bond? That, yeah, fine. we don't yeah, share with is, you guys. Yeah. We're like, those guys watch way too much nerdy TV. What are you, mm-hmm. what are you watching, Doug? Yeah. Here, what are you watching, Adam? Mm-hmm. Doug uh, turned me on to Queen's Gambit. And that's not nerdy so at all. So good. Yeah, the yeah, name doesn't sound... It's all about chess. That's yeah. not nerdy at all. <laughs> <laughs> Queen's Gambit. That sounds yeah. exciting. Yeah, so real, good. Yeah, real what's, manly. What's it about? I, I Is ha- it about Queens and Gambit? Yeah, it's about chess. And it was really good. It was really, really good. It's well written. That's why. Mm. It really is yeah, about Courtney chess? Yeah, Courtney loved it, actually. Yeah. yeah. Oh, she watched it? Yeah, she watched the whole thing. So it. Did you this? not watch it? No, she watched it without me. She's like, you probably wouldn't like this. Like, ah, okay, all right. No, it's so good. So what's the story about? So it's it's about a girl who's an orphan who learns how to play chess from a janitor and then ends up being a world-class chess player. Mm. And it's kind of like her story and uh, how she becomes this mm-hmm. world. And during a time, what, what's the era, Doug? You, uh, 30s? It's, no, it's around the 1950s. 50s, okay. Mm. So around the 50s. And so, you know, there's at that point, there's like not even a woman playing chess at that level, right? 
Yeah, I think 50s and 60s. Yeah, so it's a cool story. It's a really, really good I story. Was, I was busy watching Alien Worlds on Netflix. Did yeah, you watch that yet, Justin? I did watch a little bit. Tell me that wasn't <laughs> See, of course. <laughs> so, it was, it was trippy. Perfect transition. It was trippy. Dude, Alien Worlds. So you know what it is? It's so Okay, so here's what's crazy. When I was a kid, uh, when I was like 12, my uncle, my godfather, right? And he always bought me things that um, were really cool. And he got me this book on alien planets, on what scientists could uh, imagine aliens would be like on different planets. So like on this planet with lots of gravity, what would the life look like? Mm -hmm. On this planet where there's these types of gases, what would the aliens look like? So I had this book and I loved it when I was a kid. Anyway, the show on Netflix is the same thing, but even better yeah. because the technology is better. They have better speculations. So well, they have artists rendering all these like animals and like kind of merging primates with like all these other characteristics yeah. of their environment. So it's rad. interesting. Yeah. Oh, so rad, dude. So yeah. you're watching cool. it and it's like watching Animal Planet, but on a fictitious planet. Yeah, totally made up. Yeah. Totally made up. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. Justin Adams not excited yeah. about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's what Doug and I talk about. I mean, there, every once in a while we all align. Like, there's there's shit like Mandalorian. There's nobody in here that doesn't oh, like Mandalorian, right? Please. Bro. Just, Doug, you're a fan. It. Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah. I mean, we're like there's certain shows that I think just I think hit all of us really well and then there's stuff that like you guys like and there's stuff I think Doug and I can like. We, totally. Can we talk about Mandalorian? It, can, can we or are we Best episode I yet. I feel like it because you know I, I looked on their if Instagram real... and they're, 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 they show all the, it's the spoilers potentially or whatever Look, they're putting it out there. Yeah so we're going to do some spoilers Come on it's if, Tuesday. If you're a real fan you yeah, should have seen it by now. Yeah it's Tuesday. It's actually Thursday. Oh it's well, Thursday. It's actually yeah. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Doug. Yeah. Thanks Doug. <laughs> you had a few days buffer there. <laughs> yeah dude come on. Just because Doug. If you're a week behind on Mandalorian you're not that big of a fan. So how it's good true. how good was the last episode? Oh, that was my favorite one yet. Dude. Yeah. I'll be honest. All 32 so, minutes. Yeah. That made I know, me right? That was the only thing. Like, ooh, it just cut us high and dry. Dude, but yeah. when they showed Boba, yeah. I was like, did you jump out of your chair? I didn't know if they're gonna bring him back, you know, because there was all this like so you get the uh unif or you get the uh, uh armor and whatnot, and the, the other guy had it, and I'm just like, oh man, it'd have been cool if like they brought Boba Fett back, but I didn't want it to be like contrived. You know, I, so, want it to I be mean, just like forced in there. I, I didn't know that was him until this morning when you guys brought that up. Was Even I watching said, the episode, you didn't yeah. realize what'd you he said that he like said his multiple name. times. He did? Yeah. Like four times. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even remember him saying his name. Yeah. How much weed did you have yeah. before you watched well, the yeah. <laughs> This is possible. <laughs> <laughs> this is possible. No. Yeah. Because you... I didn't. I guess you just have to be so into all that stuff to remember all. I don't. I didn't remember. You that. do have to do a little research, and that's. I think that's maybe a knock for your just average watcher and viewer. Uh, but it's. I think it's really cool that they're tying in all these things because it just brings more depth. Now that weapon that he was wielding, the like the staff or whatever, oh, did yeah, he have that, that cool. in the previous one? No, I don't think so. I don't, I don't remember I that don't either. Remember it? Yeah. That thing was awesome. He was, that was sick. He was, he was shattering doing some damage with that thing. Yeah, he was shattering the the. What are they called? The stormtroopers. There you go. They're helmets. Okay. Yeah. By the way, can stormtroopers ever hit anything? That's never. That's no. never happened. No, of course not. Well, actually, I, I was watching in Mando. The you know he was getting hit a few times, but he has the best car, so they kind of did. That's that. the only time they have good arm, a good aim. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just straight on. He wasn't so even stupid. like avoiding it. Hey, I got some conspiracy stuff to bring up. Oh boy, do the music. Conspiracy music. <laughs> so this is uh, pretty funny to me. So I, my uncle is like this huge conspiracy theory guy right and he's telling me about oh so it runs in the family a little bit yeah so well he's a okay remember he's a a, a chinese uh, medicine guy so okay. he he's uh he can do chi he can he's certified in chinese medicine he's got a wellness stu and he did this is before it was cool so remember he was doing the ship in the 70s Shh. and 80s yeah sure okay. so he's always like weary of anything that's main skeptical so every time he sends me stump something, I'm I look it up first. Like he's he sent me stuff before, like you know this copper bracelet balances out your whatever, and I'm like okay whatever. Yeah. But anyway, he sent me this thing, and he said, "Do you know that the vaccine's going to contain this uh, this enzyme in it, this bioluminescence enzyme, and the name of the enzyme is Luci luciferase." Luciferase. Luciferase. Really? Like, like, yeah. Like Lucifer Ace. <laughs> really? <laughs> That's the actual thing. I like. I, I can't believe it. Like I, it's like it's just like so in your face. So okay, knowing you, you go deep into something. So after when you saw that, did you go read about it? Like, what, yes. how did it, How does something like that end because up? Because it's bioluminescence. Um, so apparently, this enzyme can make things uh, illuminate. And so the now here's what the conspiracy theories uh, theorists are saying that when you get this, 
particular vaccine, that COVID vaccine, which by the way, they're talking about administering it, not the traditional way with an injection, but rather, have you seen these things? They look like little band-aids with tiny, tiny, tiny needles. Mm. So you'll get it in the mail, you'll put it on your arm. It's like the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The little white, the patch, that the glucose monitor. Yeah, even yeah, smaller. Continual glucose monitor. Oh. Even smaller. Oh, wow. So it's like tons and tons of these little tiny needles that they uh, have copied the fangs of uh, like a cobra. Uh, based off, but they're really, really small. You put it on your arm, and they're saying that the, the conspiracy theorists are saying that you'll be able to see if you've had the vaccine by passing a light over your arm because you'll get the bioluminescence. Luminescence. But the name is hilarious. If you're a conspiracy theorist and someone's like, "Hey, here's something we're going to inject into you that you already like totally feel like is a conspiracy," and then it's called Lucifer Ace. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just a few questions with this, right? So you, you say you have this bioluminescence in your system. How long does that stay in your system? How long can you even scan? Like the, the, the logistics of that doesn't make any sense. I have no idea. But then apparently there's nanotechnology that they'll that they'll put in there, right? And all kinds of stuff. Yeah. So I watched Which, a whole yeah. I watched a whole fun video on it. So I mean, what's your prediction? What do you guys think? Do you think it's going to be like a so? They, do you think it's not going to be mandatory, but then there's going to be lots of private businesses that require it in order to have access? Like, that's what I think. That's what it's going to look like? Yeah, I don't I don't think it'll be mandatory um, unless a lot of people don't get it. And here's... this. Is, no, okay, now let's throw away the conspiracy hat now. You're right. Legit. Like, if I was <laughs> if I was in control of public policy, especially in a country like, uh, like America, I would... Not make it mandatory because I feel like that would... It's unconstitutional. Well, not that. just that. That would really, believe it or not, the Supreme Court ruled a long time ago that they could mandate vaccines. That's crazy. I know. But anyway, here's the deal. If you want a whole segment of the population to not get a vaccine and to fight tooth and nail, just make it mandatory. Yeah. You know, because you're just going to make it make them dig their heels in. Right. Yeah, why put any nefarious kind of like intent? Why, why not? Like it's something that you want people to go get, right? Mm -hmm. Like let's 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 have that as an option and have everybody celebrate it. Yeah, so I feel like that would be worse. Now, let's say the, the vaccine comes out and a lot of people don't get it and for a while, then maybe what they would do is something like, because um, I don't know if the federal government would have, the, they don't have necessarily the power to do that. States could do it. States could say, you have to have a mandatory vaccine uh, because they have the you know the, the state police and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I could foresee them saying stuff like you're not allowed to fly. Um, some states may say you need to have proof of vaccine to enter into our state or to leave the state or to attend public school or to get public checks or that kind of stuff. I could see that kind of stuff later on. Mm. But I don't know how they would make it like – Besides that, man. Yeah, what's okay? So, dude, why call it Luciferes? <laughs> You're still on that. Huh? <laughs> like, what an <clears throat> asshole! Like, I think it's kind of. They just want all the like real like yeah like religious people out there to just freak out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're like they're in the background laughing. Yeah, like, you just got the mark of the beast. Yeah, let's name it like yeah <laughs> New World Order. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's hey, let's you be honest. If you two were scientists, you would do some shit like that. You don't act like you wouldn't do That's that. That's an asshole move. No, you it's like an Easter egg. asshole move. It is an Easter egg. It you, is, you dude. Would totally do Easter that. Egg. You'd be like, "This is gonna be funny as shit, right yeah. here." Yeah. We're gonna name it this. These idiots <laughs> still put it in, anyways. <laughs> We're called the new vaccine is called Kami COVID <laughs> <laughs> or some shit like that. Yeah, yeah. Hey guys, watch this. Yeah. Watch yeah. everybody freak out. <laughs> no. The bar Wait a minute. The you bar bamboozled me. The barcode for the vaccine is six six six. I know, right? Like, come on, man. They do that shit. You're on. just like emphasizing all this hysteria. Yeah, uh, it's pretty. It's pretty annoying. <laughs> you guys, hey, well, go, ahead, go ahead. I was gonna talk about the fans only. Um, oh, did yeah. you see that? I did see that. I did see that. That's a billion dollar. I told you. I've been saying that for a long time when that first started. So happening. it's a specific company that does that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, they're they're raking it in, and they make twenty percent. So I, I didn't until I read that article. I didn't know what how. I was like, how, how are they making their money? Yeah. So they're making twenty percent. I was like, that's crazy though. Oh, I mean, yeah. just by hosting. So what did the article say? Two billion dollar. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So well, I mean, just a few of those, right? The one you mentioned that was like used to be a Disney star yeah. that like converted over. Made, Bella Thorne. Yeah. Millions. Like, I know. In, in a few days. So, so basically what, 
help me out with this, Adam. I know. I, I feel like I need to join so I can. I'm better educated on one of these. So. Oh, I thought you did yeah. already. No, yeah. I haven't. Never mind that. I have not. So I what, got one up just for my feet. Yeah. <laughs> just so, just if, it's you wanna, if you guys want to check it out, you have to, I got but, hammer toes. Yeah, it's it's a very niche market. But the but yeah. the way it works is opposite. Yeah. You pay me to not you see. You pay this. me. <laughs> I can send it to your coworkers. You know, you do whatever you want with it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's a gift that keeps giving. Friday is big to, big big toe Friday. I try and articulate them. You know, on Fridays. Tuesday oh, is yellow toe nail yeah. Tuesday. Gross. Yeah, disgusting. No, so how does it work? They host this and then they allow you to connect with fans they pay you so they process the whole thing essentially you go on there you sign up they take care of everything and then you just they just take 20 percent. yeah i mean i'm i'm i from what i'm aware of I, re I really don't have access to one so i don't know but i, sh I should i feel like uh and, for uh, research purposes. Yeah, so, so tell Katrina hey, Katrina, that. This, is, saying, this is for the podcast. What are you looking at? Oh, yeah, this is, like, what's really going on in this there? This is for podcast content, honey. Uh, Relax. I'm a, I'm uh, yeah, no, journalist. I think it's... Um, <laughs> I think it's real similar to any like paid wall, uh, you know, like a Patreon or anything like that, where you just you pay you, and because the 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 consumer, or excuse me, the creator uh, decides how much they want to charge. So you could Justin's toes are probably worth I don't know twenty dollars a month. I'd say yeah, more so than that. right, right. Well, to not see them, it's Doug's high. nudes 20, might be 000. worth more like fifty dollars a month or oh, whatever. Yeah. So you Smo have it's called smoothnudes.com. Yeah, yeah. Smooth, <laughs> smooth, <nudes. laughs> smooth. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of wow. cr crush videos. Wow, <laughs> if you ask them, <laughs> smooth smoothnudes.com forward slash pink. smooth. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, get your first three months free. Yeah, right? but that's that's a brilliant business model. Honestly, oh, no. and they don't. I mean, they're just hosting everything. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, and I don't even. So I, what I don't know because I'm not again not on there. I don't know if there's like a big advertising on it yet or not, or it's they're making that money mm. just from hosting these creators because obviously you're trafficking that many people through there. It opens up a huge potential for uh, advertising. Well, too. so think about it this way. Let's say you're a B list celebrity. You're not, you're not a list, right? You're B list. So you're in movies and then your acting career is kind of starting to dry up. Mm. Easy way to make millions of dollars. Well, Easy. Shit, you don't even need to be that. I mean, you don't even need to be an actor. You just got to be hot. You just got to be, yeah, good looking Instagram well, person. Well, yeah, but if you're. Good if, looking Instagram person and it's got a few hundred thousand followers is already making big money. Yeah, yeah but if you're like somewhat known, people are more. They, they want to see the person that they've seen on TV. You know, it. it's like I, the Hollywood series. Aren't we in the shift right now? I mean, is Hollywood that famous anymore? I, I don't think so. Like, I, I feel like if you picked a. I bet if you grabbed a uh, twenty-year-old kid and said, "Name me ten famous actors and, and or ten Instagram stars or YouTube celebrities," yeah, right, or like YouTube, like I bet you they could hundred percent, dude. It's all shifted to YouTube and Instagram. Yeah. Because, I mean, look for instance the Logan Paul thing. Look at this, dude. Oh, now yes. he's got you know he signed like. Mayweather agreed bro, to this. Bro, I could not believe I'm that. I'm just like, I'm done. So I'm going to say this, okay? So remember this episode, By the way, Adam. Wait, okay, yeah. Okay, remember this episode. You can, you can see now. It, huh? it appears you may have been right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't Timestamp. Even, yeah, I don't even get like a full, like, you were right. It's just like, no. a, it appears maybe. It appears maybe. It's, it appears it's, maybe it's trending in that direction. Very likely. We have, to count, we have to recount the ballots, but it looks like <laughs> yeah. you're the projected winner of that yeah. opinion. That could take months. No, so. I mean. I mean, um, this is crazy to me. Mayweather agreed to fight Logan Paul in an exhibition. Ugh. Now, if I'm a boxer, like, and I've been fighting just my infuriated. and getting punched and doing all that shit for years, yeah, I would be, I would be so mad. Yeah, you know, I, I it, it's interesting that Mayweather took that because it isn't it kind of making a mockery of the sport. Yes. I mean, it if it, if this was any other sport, you would you would feel like it was almost disrespectful, right? I feel like for boxing, well, definitely is. for boxing purists, Mayweather is ruining. In my opinion, he's ruining. You know, the thing. we should call up our buddy Tony. It's been a while since we talked to Tony. Tony would be a good person to ask questions around. Like he's this been thing. doing videos about all this. Oh, he's too. annoyed yeah, by oh, it. Tyson he has? fights and, and oh, I haven't I haven't yeah. been, I haven't caught up on his. Stuff he's annoyed by it. Oh, he is. Of course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. That's right. He's a purist. I mean, yeah. he's an Olympian. Well, I know exactly. So it's kind of it's it is a total you know why mockery. because Mayweather's not agreeing to fight any real boxers. You know, so, so if you're a real boxer, you and you're good, you want to fight him, and he's saying no to everybody, and he's agreeing to fight. Yeah. Logan Paul, which so it's all about the money is what he's basically putting but out there. We've always known that, right? Yeah, he's and I mean, he's, he's never been that and guy. he's never tried to hide that either he in, hasn't. His de, in his defense. But I mean, when your name because Mayweather, let's be honest, he's one of the greatest boxers of all time. He really is. Yeah. But when you put his name up there with all the other greats, it's going to tarnish 
his name, and then again for the people in the sport, that's got to be infuriating. The love the people who love the sport, but look, you know, it's a it's yeah. A, but doesn't he have a lot of money? Like, like, what does he spent it all? Like, why the 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 need for it? Well, I, mean, I don't think he's got good money management. Yeah. Let's be honest. Have you well, seen some of his videos? <laughs> I have. Yeah. How yeah. Didn't he bet like I don't know how many millions of dollars crazy. on some other stupid shit? And yeah, lost. that guy's yeah. got so much money coming yeah. in. So, many so here's ways. what I hope happens. I hope he goes in the ring with Logan Paul and then actually kicks his ass. Uh, but I have a feeling he's going to fuck with him. Well, no, to make it fun hey, we, to watch. Look at look what happened with him and uh, and Connor. I yeah, mean, he'll let him get his shots. Like that's and honestly, he'll dance around. Yeah. He'll fight how he's fought every fight. Like that's. I mean, Mayweather is not the type to come in. Put his head down and just go, you know, Tyson just somebody. somebody out. Yeah, he's he doesn't really knock people. No, out. what he's what he's famous for is being able to elude punches. So yeah. that's what he's going to do. Is he's going to go on? Because I mean, yeah, he's what, a master what's, of that. What's their weight difference? Oh yeah, he's got to be way bigger. Oh Logan yeah, Paul. Logan Paul's got to have at least sixty pounds on him. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they're not even in the same weight class. But he feel I'm sure Mayweather knows that he can go in there. And get the kid to miss punch after punch after yeah. punch. And, and you then, just tie him up and turn his back to him and do all that shit that we what saw I, last what time. What I am interested, you know, here, and here's the thing, like, that's just it. Like, there's a part of me that will watch it, dude. Of course. Yeah, that's, you know, and we're not alone. Now, here's the deal. Logan I'll Paul, Logan, if you're Logan Paul, your goal is to go in there and put him to sleep. Because oh, if you knock out Mayweather, oh my God, right? So he's going to go in oh there and God. he's going to try. Can you imagine? He's going to try uh, hard. Now, you guys realize that this, this, is what the movie Rocky was based off of, right? This actually happened with to Ali. Ali did a fight with a kind of no name guy. I think Chuck Wepner was the guy's name. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. you ever watched a documentary on him? Uh, Great documentary, probably. Yeah, yeah. Look that up, Doug. What the? There's a there's a name. Uh, there, it's I don't know if it's called his uh, Chuck Wepner's uh, uh, documentary or it has a different name. I think it has a different name. Really good documentary. Yeah, because Chuck Wepner's nickname was the Bronkton Bleeder. Yes. So you know he mm. wasn't the greatest <laughs> boxer of all time. <laughs> but he went in, Muhammad Ali, obviously the greatest boxer of all time, one of the greatest, was playing with him, and Wepner caught him and knocked him on his butt. And then Ali put a beating on him, but beat the guy and the guy would not go down. Yeah. So he gained the respect of the crowd. It, and this is this is the so Sylvester Stallone, a young Sylvester Stallone was watching this fight, and that's what inspired him to write the story. For Rocky, because that's the story of Rocky, right? Yeah, Rocky's right. a exhibition Pretty bout, much. and Creed is like, "This is a, you know, I'm going to kick this guy's ass," and yeah. end up beating him for 15 rounds and couldn't put him down. Uh, oh, it's called the real Rocky. Uh, maybe that's what it is. Wow. Yeah, yeah, that was really good. Yeah, really, really good. Yeah. So, but I don't know, man. There's a whole big. There's a whole. It's a whole other universe when you go from like, you know, Logan Paul who can punch hard to world class. Uh, yeah. So what do you think it's going to do to the sport of boxing, though? You, you think it's going to completely change it, or do you think it's going to open up a different, you know, a whole different, like, a league? That Boxing's doesn't... been hurting for a long time, yeah. let's be honest. No, it has. And, and, and of course, MMA has really uh, like the last, accelerated that, right? The last big, like, bo- like boxers that really pulled people was, like, what, Pacquiao? I'm trying to think right now. Who's the, lo- the last boxer yeah, where everybody wants to watch? Triple G is amazing to watch, but nobody's watching. I don't, no. I don't feel like. No. Well, I, think, think of how all sports have evolved. Like you, you basketball, it's like the the, the crazy pass and the, the dunk. You know, uh, f- uh, football is now. I mean, we're just, I was just watching Mahomes' uh, his, like record that he's setting right now for how many passing yards in so many games consecutive. Like it wasn't even that long ago in the NFL <clears throat> that it was all run, run, run. Just put mm-hmm. it. Now it's like pass like crazy. So this all sports like evolve. To what's more entertaining for you? Home yeah. runs in baseball drove all the the Sammy Sosa McGuire thing, right? Boxing hasn't really changed that much. MMA was the closest thing that's kind of evolved that are. That's changed an interesting that. thought because that was what saved uh, from the lockout. You yeah. know, with with baseball, that's what saved the sport was the home run race. That's, yeah, that's and what they're I'm all saying. remember. Remember, they're all funded by spectators, so yeah. it's all the audience is really driving yeah. what they do. And but we the, wanted these super fights with like experienced world class boxers. Maybe they're older and past their prime, but like that was sort of a thing. But now it's yeah. like YouTube star with old, you know, world class boxers. It's weird. It's kind of the, just the natural evolution. I feel like you're probably right. Yeah, I feel like you know it would be good then in that case. Thinking right now, let's just imagine you were going to start a fight company. I bet if you started a fight company, it's somewhere in the world and made it the the non drug tested fight, 
league or that, whatever. That would be awesome. I feel like everybody would <laughs> yeah. watch that. All of our fighters. Place to be pride, yeah, right? None of our fighters yeah. are drug tested. They could take whatever they want, you know, and they get in the cage. But, oh my God, I want to watch uh, that. Yeah. Yeah. All these monsters going Yeah, after. I mean, if you're just an, if you're, uh, uh, you have, you know, nothing about the sport of boxing and which is what, what percentage of people that watch the sport do you think are like super fans versus people that are just entertained by what they're, what they see? Yeah, you're right. And if you're, if you fall in that category, then just watching big name people you know fight each other is more interesting to you just you know sitting there with your buddies going like oh i wonder if he'll beat him and talking shit like that's more entertaining than actually watching the sport and seeing like all the little i mean truth be told hmm. we're all gonna watch mayweather fight logan i guarantee it i mean i'm not paying for it you know uh, okay. <laughs> i'll get one of you guys to pay for it yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, don't, I mean, I'm, just I'm out a, of principle. I want to watch. It. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, right? Like, I'm really curious to, uh, just as I was curious about the Connor fight, right? I was, I was. Curious. Oh, I was definitely in on that one, but I had the same kind of thing. So Everybody that was going crazy over that. That what I'm, what, what, uh, what I'm wondering is how I will feel about this when it's very normal. Like, there's always. Some, yeah, right now there's a lot of novelty. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot yeah. of novelty around it. It's, but after you, we've seen enough pro boxers like Mayweather probably whoop the shit out of you know the Logan and Jake Pauls that are just dabbling in this mm -hmm. you know will that like not pull the average person after five after we've seen five of these things True. well hey if you want novelty watch the mma leagues in russia you will see <laughs> shit you can't even imagine i know they're the most crazy like some of those sports where they're fighting on like levels so they have like structures that they jump <laughs> yeah. on top of and then they jump down they fight on top of they structure gang fights yeah there'll be like one big dude against four smaller guys they just did one i think two weeks ago Dude, they fight with swords Swords and, and shields. They have real weapons and real armor. And then there was one I just watched. It was a couple weeks ago. It was a big, he looked like a sumo wrestler. So like a big 450, 500 pound guy fought a woman in the ring. What? In Russia. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh my God. She, she kicked his ass actually. Oh, no. wow. Yeah, she did. That's awesome. So if you Where wanna, do you watch this? Just go on YouTube, dude. Uh, go on YouTube, look up Russian MMA, whatever, dude, and you'll see fuck around over there. the weirdest shit you've ever seen in your entire life. Really? Of, like anything. They have an arm wrestling league where there's two ways to win. You either beat the guy in arm wrestling or you knock him out. So they, they grab... <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. You can punch him. How have you like, never brought this up? So they grab hand. They strap your hands together, right? Yeah, And then, they say, and then you have an MMA glove in the other hand. And they Shut, go... That is not real. I swear to God. And they go, ready, go. And then they start <laughs> punching each other up. <laughs> And our what? Oh, you gotta look this up. I want to watch that. I know that sounds amazing. They, okay, so the arm wrestling arm that they're so arm you can pin their arm. That's okay, how you okay, win, so or you knock the and guy they out. tape. They tape you together. They like yeah. They strap the hands together. Okay, and then you're just they're just and so you have two ways of winning. Either one you can't back out. doing the the arm, you know, pinning him in arm wrestling, yes. or two knocking him out. Yes, I'm probably more concerned with knocking him out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> and and I, I wonder like how, so did their elbows fixed in there. I like, don't remember. Exactly. Yeah, because I feel like you, right away, if like you're throwing punches, you're like you're gonna pull back. Here, I think Doug. Dude, that is melee. I think Doug found uh, found it. Let's uh, let's see it. Up. I need to see this. Oh, X arm. X, X arm. Extreme arm wrestling. Greatest hits. Yeah. This is. Shut oh yeah. Watch, up. Oh yeah. It's the great. It's the it's the most insane. Why thing. have you never brought this up before? You know, I might have had brought it up a long Why, time ago. We should watch this together. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, well. It's after you watch two of them, it's you know what they're gonna you kinda do. You kind of get it. Really? Yeah, I still think it would be entertaining carnage. as shit. Yeah. Look at this. Where is this is so this is in Russia, you said? Um, I don't know if this was in Russia or the US. Well, this, I mean, the technique should be kind of similar when, when you're, uh, you know, in hockey where they have to grab the jersey just to, to keep stabilized and hit with the other it, arm. Now, if it's in the U.S., it's probably in a in, on a uh, Native American reservation. That's where they do all the crazy stuff, right? Because <laughs> it's all the own. crazy stuff. Well, yeah, because they don't have to follow the same. Right. Yeah, fast forward. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, give me this. Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> this guy's for Oh, my God. Watch this. I know. I'm going to see one. Okay. So they, okay. Who signs up for they, this, they, by the way? Oh, That's, so they. they yeah, they, it's a special kind of guy. Even the hand. Wow, they can throw elbows. Ooh, elbows? Oh yeah, you could you could you could kick the guy. How do you kick when they're across? Ready? Look, watch, watch, watch. <laughs> watch this. I mean, <laughs> they each other, bro. I mean, look, what? I need to throw his what? Over He's arm barring him. He's arm barring. He arm barred the guy. Yeah. This what? Is, how do you score that? I don't know, dude. Wow. Now here's a yeah. This is so. If you ever want to see. What the the extreme look at kicks oh, in the head. Oh, oh, oh dude. Okay, don't don't lean down. You get kicked in the face. Yeah. If you yeah. ever want to see the difference, like a stark difference between men and women, you, this right here. Like I don't Yeah. This is a guy this is like a stupid guy right. idea right here. But it sounded like a good idea. No, this yeah. is a, wow, this is great. Yeah. yeah, it's terrible. Oh, go to sleep. 
Yeah. yeah so I it. okay. What what's weird to me is that as soon as the 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 referee lets go of the hands and it's go time, it really turns into an MMA fight with with your hand tied to the guy you're fighting. Yeah. Yeah. You kind of leave that little table. The table is like useless. Yeah. Right. I feel like the arm wrestling part is like, <laughs> oh, oh, that dude just got cleaned yeah, out. That's it. I know. Isn't that terrible? And he's still tied to him. You're like celebrating. Or he's just like dangling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> that's a thing, dude. That wow. Thing. Yeah. Hey, I'm going to transition to something <laughs> really cool. I wanted to bring this up. Uh, did you know Airbnb is going to be going public? Yes. Because I know oh, you're such a huge yes. fan. Yeah, that's uh, soon too, right? Yes. Real, I, real soon. I think it's going to be coming up here in the next few weeks, I want to say. I actually had that in my notes to bring That's up. It was like company. I saw an article maybe a week or two ago, um, and I think, which is crazy because they took a big hit uh, with uh, COVID. They yeah. did. But yeah. I'm, I think they're going to, I don't think they're going anywhere, though. No, of course they're not, not going anywhere. No, of course not. No, someone was asking me investment advice uh, in my DMs, and I want to be on. I mean, here's the deal I have a lot of family members, is what they do for a living. So I learned just through them but the best piece of advice i ever got was to invest in things that i know about because that helps you ride the waves mm -hmm. so if you invest in a company that you really understand and know about then you're okay with what you'll see in the market which are ups and downs because that's the biggest problem the hardest challenge with investments is not selling when the shit starts to drop because you don't want to sell when it's low or not buying when it's already high you need to have faith in the company so you could ride those things out so um, best piece of advice I ever got. So like Airbnb, that's something I would invest in because we had spent so much time renting Airbnb, you know, houses and stuff when oh, we were traveling. It was a game changer. Yeah. It was too, way too convenient. And I just don't see that that would like, once it was opened up, they wouldn't take that back. Well, no, I mean, no. look at your, I mean, or at least for my own personal behaviors with like going somewhere and staying, like, I mean, just two decades ago, you always stayed in a hotel where mm -hmm. it's, it went from, Always staying in a hotel to oh this new company Airbnb to never staying in a hotel to never like yep. I mean it's very very rare that we use a hotel anywhere we go. There's now. a lot of upswing with them too because they haven't really generated a huge profit yet, so they're still in that pro that's still going through the growth phase. Oh, and you still will go find. I mean, I think that the future of Airbnb looks still different than what it is right now. Which so do I. Is I don't think you'll ever stay at a house in the future that isn't bought and used. For Airbnb, Airbnb oh, yeah. only, like it's yeah. it'll be a hundred percent utilized like that. Mm -hmm. Versus you still got like a 50-50 shot depending on where you're going, right? Obviously, like areas that are traveled a lot to are are starting to evolve into this. But I I remember just I mean six years we've been doing this together. Before that, Katrina and I were already using this, and when we first did it, it was you know nine out of ten houses that we would go to looked like you know they live there still. Yeah. And then, you know, in the time, the short period of time that we were all it's using- It's already moved forward. Yeah. It's already progressed. Yeah, I would say- more professional. It, I would say it would be the flip, right? Yeah. I, I would say probably seven or 10 at a times we go to a house. Now it looks like a hotel, It's you know, or somebody staged it completely. Yeah, and I can't, like, I, I guarantee with all these other options where you can, like, rent a parking, you can rent a garage space, you can, like, they're going to add features like that, uh, you know, as they become public. Like, it, it just makes perfect sense because yep. now I can maximize whatever place I have, you know, to, to make money even when I'm not there. Uh, I believe in the concept so much. At one point I was considered considering buying properties to put them on Airbnb to, 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 you know, uh, profit off of them. Right. Like the concept is not just good for people who are, who like to travel. The concept's also amazing for investors. Exactly. Like if you are somebody that wants to, you know, invest in real estate, like I, I see so many potentials with this. That's definitely a company um, that I believe in. So, you know, it's something I'm going to keep an eye on. I do know that sure. a, a lot of uh, owners, though, d are not fans of them all the time, right? Like, if you think about it, if you buy somewhere that's like, you know, in Tahoe or a place that you love, and then your neighbors are air, both your neighbors are Airbnb. That's the threat. Oh, South Lake is real restrictive. They are. And that's the threat. The threat is the will be local laws. Like, if you buy something and then you're Airbnb it, making money, mm -hmm. and then they pass a law that says, uh, sorry, you can't do that anymore, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. now you're totally screwed. Or hotel lobbies start to gain more traction. Oh, and, they, and they already are doing that in places for sure. Yes, so yes, that'll yes. be the biggest challenge with it. But I mean, I think they'll end up eventually winning, just like Uber. I think it's too yeah. late. I think the cat's out of the bag, yeah, right? Yeah, so yeah. it's and definitely too late. Speaking of companies that um, I have a lot of faith in, um, my son is totally into Viore's uh, 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 joggers. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah yes, nice. and he's getting compliments on it. So did he's I, did I bring in up, that age group? You know? Did I uh -huh. bring up on the show that they're uh, uh, moving to Valley Fair? 
Did I tell you guys? Oh that? yeah, you, I think you did. Well, you told us. I don't know if it was on the show. Well, but. Felix Gray, I, I brought up. I know for sure. I brought up Felix Gray on the last commercial. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, I brought them up because they're there already. Like I saw them. But Viore's coming, so like, oh, wow. and, yeah. So I think I think uh, what did I see? Spring. I think it's supposed to be here, which is going to be really cool. That's interesting. I wonder too, because I mean, they were, you know, like uh, basically you buy everything online and all these online uh, retail companies. I see now them seeing opportunity, maybe because the the retail's cheaper now. Right. Kind of right. go. In. I mean, imagine if you're like a Viore, right? Who you started as a you know direct to consumer business first, and then you started bu buying these brick and Like, how pumped are you right now? Well, you're oh, just like what you're, a smart transition. Your model yeah, totally. was already set up for exactly. Not, you're already succeeding. Yeah, you're already succeeding without. Even even having store locations and oh all of a sudden this shit happens where everybody's losing and leaving and so you're, and and you we put see it in strategic areas where you know people can drive to it just to pick product up you know all that kind of that's stuff. That's the model sense. I think that's the model now. I yeah. think it really is the model now to do it that way versus the old model which was brick and mortar first and then But talk you know, about hard though I mean. Oh I, real hard. Yeah real hard. I mean even Viore right like Viore's been one of those brands that I mean we've we've now been with them for what four years or more now mm -hmm. we've been with Viore for a long time and uh, at that time uh, everybody I knew didn't know who the hell they were yeah. they were mm -hmm. still small this is before they were even getting into REIs and places like that and it is one of those it's one of those articles of clothing that you have to wear first before you fall in otherwise just some yeah random brand that you hear on a podcast mm -hmm. or whatever so not seeing it in a store not being able to go try it on or like it's just that's a tough sell to me yeah. But I mean, it, one of the things that's great is you know, you put on a, you, you, a pair of them, just like our. Well, they win you over. Yeah, yeah. It, it is about like the feel and the quality, like over everything. Yeah, yeah, they're super up and coming. When you read the articles about the athleisure wear market, uh, Viore's always named as one of the like the like one of the big players or one of the ones that's going to be one of those big players. Absolutely. So. First question is from Jamil A one forty four. What would be your Go to quick and dirty full body warm up. Oh, that's kind of a cool question. That's actually a great question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it's a good, just kind of full body warm up. I uh, got one. Turkish get up. Do, do a couple Turk. Sure. Hits do, all the, yeah. Do some rounds of all Turkish get up and it tends yeah, to. That's not bad. It tends to warm up all the areas <clears throat> that need uh, activation, at least for me, right? So uh, thoracic uh, helps work on my thoracic mobility. There's some rotation involved. My hips warms them up uh, pretty well. So it gets me kind of. All the areas that I need to warm up in. Yeah, I like it. Uh, well, they call it the world's greatest stretch. Oh, right? so you're going to see what I was going to say, which yeah. is the walking so it's lizard, like an worm lizard with rotation, right? You, do, you basically do a lizard with rotation with an inchworm. So yeah. that combines both of those. So, you you know, you get hips open up, you get rotation, you get the, I mean, all the benefits of the posterior chain kind of waking up, like everything. So, yeah. yeah, I'm with you on that. That's all, I, that, to this day, that's what I still do. Really? Yeah, I almost always do that. That's a, And that's what, one with clients. Such a great warm-up. Up to take them like especially if you have a if you have a gym or a, an area where you actually have a little bit of room to do what Justin's saying otherwise you, you could do, do it in place yeah you could do it in place where I'll go 10 on one side and then 10 on the other side and and warm them up like when I used to run boot camps this was like a staple warm-up mm -hmm. um, but I'm with you Justin I mean there's it literally gets everything it gets every and if you can in, if you can include it into like an inchworm where you're going across the room and back, you really get everything. Well, I mean, truth be told, the original quick warm up was a few sets of whatever exercise you're going to do uh, with lightweight, controlled, and slow form. I mean, that's the old school, kind of easy way to warm up. So, whatever exercise you're doing first. There's still people in the, the strength camp that believe that that's the way still. Yeah, because I mean, look, it's the most specific movement pattern, uh, mm. at least specific to the exercise. Maybe not 100% ideal to the individual. Yeah. Depending on the person, but it's very, it's obviously if I'm warming up a squats to squat, it's very specific to the movement. I so strongly disagree too with that. Well, you know why? Because I, you have to have some good body awareness. Like I could get away with it because I know when I'm warming up, for example, barbell squats, I'll just use myself as an example. A couple of areas that I need warm up are my hips, my ankles. Um, and my upper back, right? Getting my shoulders to pin back. Mm -hmm. So, but I know this. So the way I would warm up with light weight is I would focus on my ankle mobility yeah, on the way down. Activate all those areas. I would exactly activate my upper back, squeeze the bar back. I'd slow down. I'd pause at the bottom, work on the different areas I need to activate, push my knees out. Cause that's what I need to do to activate my, you know, the side parts of my, my abductors, I should say. Um, so it requires a little bit more awareness, but uh, bro, 
not a little bit, mm-hmm. a lot more yeah. awareness. Because I agree with you in that. And there's times, don't get there. I just did it the other day where I was like, ah, no, I've skipped my little warm up. I'm just going to get under the bar with real lightweight and do exactly what you said. Um, and you have to, when you're, when you are trying to connect to areas where you have a poor connection to while you're also squ- squatting and there are multiple areas mm-hmm. of your body, mm-hmm. the level of awareness uh, that you have to have to be able to do that. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and even then, like it still isn't as good as me picking each part uh, and individually priming that and getting in. No, no, it doesn't come close. Because I'm all the exact same areas you are. Hips, ankles, thoracic. Like those are the three areas before squatting. And I've got an exercise or two that I do for all of them and mm-hmm. prime to prime. And then I get under there. It is night and day difference in comparison to that. Now, does that mean I can't get under the bar and just do some warm ups? Sure, no, I can, and I believe I believe there's some people that lift consistently that do have that connection, yeah. like you're saying, they can do that. But I still would challenge that person uh, to do those to go through the the specific priming movements first, and then get in yeah. there and tell me you don't. Yeah, feel it's better. really hard to address any compensatory pattern. Like yep. if if you're just going through the gross movement of it, and and yes, you can try and kind of feel your way into it, and like uh, you know grip the bar a certain way, sh- you know uh, pin your shoulders back, and do all these types of things. But it's just you're gonna really like help to isolate that, and then bring it in when you prime it properly. Well. I mean, okay, to add to all of that, here's here just in layman's terms, this is why the warm-up sets before the exercise isn't always ideal for a lot of people. Whatever your poor movement pattern is with the squat, you'll tend to do that with your warm-up too. So of course. what ends up happening exactly. is you just you warm up wrong. So you're warming up and yes, you're getting your heart rate up a little bit and your the muscles are filling up with blood and all that stuff, which is better than nothing. But you're you're just you're reinforcing whatever issue you have. Yeah. So then you go in your exercise, and it's just bad warm up, bad form is what it leads to. So uh, you know, individualized priming is superior. I mean, I tell you what, if you have worked out for a long time, if you got a, a program like Maps Prime, take the compass, do the individualized uh, uh, priming session, and then tell me that that doesn't completely change your workout. Literally, tell me yeah. if it doesn't. Um, cause it will, it completely will blow your mind. Now for beginners, it's a, I think it's necessary, but advanced lifters, give it a shot. Watch what happens. You'll, you'll never go back to the old way again. If you haven't gone on my, so on my Instagram, I would, I don't know. I don't post that often anymore. So you could probably go back, I don't know, maybe 20, 20 to 30 posts at, at most, maybe less than that. And I did a video of uh, how I how I prime before squatting now, which is kind of a combination of all those exercises. So it is a little advanced, and I think I say that in the video that you know once you understand what you're trying to get connected to with your ankles, your hips, and your back, upper back, like your Saint Sal. You've seen me do this before, haven't you? Mm. Where I sit all the way down in a squat yes, position with, yes. a, with a band, yes. and I'm close to the bar, so I'm. And, I, and in that position, like I'm literally, the, and I talk about this in the video, like I, the, my check my checkpoints that I'm going, oh, first I think of my tucking my chin for my neck because of my forward head. I then I'm, I'm pulling the, the bands apart. So I'm doing like a reverse fly for the upper back and rear delts. So I pull my shoulders back while I'm sitting all the way in the deepest position I can in the squat. I'm, I'm pushing my knees out while also driving them forward over my toes and connecting like for a combat stretch. So I'm kind of doing all of them all in one move. But I also don't teach that to somebody who I'm trying to make aware of all their imbalances first. Like it's like you you first do ask that. me for the right person. Yeah, you need to first do that. And I you know again challenge anybody like you said go through you know prime and, and find out what yours are. Do that before you you especially the big lifts, the squats, the benches, the deadlifting. Really priming well before you do that. I you can't I Tim, you can't tell me you don't feel you'll used. never want to go back. All right. Next question is from Brady Sims three. When should you use and not use a lifting belt? Well, first of all, it's up to you. Uh, so you can use one or not. Not that big of a deal, but I'll put these people in the category of people that probably should use a lifting belt. Uh, number one, people who compete in strength events that use lifting belts. Mm-hmm. So like if you're a power lifter or a strong man and your event allows you to use a weight lifting belt, power lifters for sure, uh, they always wear belts um, or, or it's allowed in competition. Then you're going to want to wear a belt when you lift because there's a technique and a skill to using a belt. You don't just put one on and then voila, you feel stronger and more stable. 
there's actually a skill and technique to learning how to use one properly and how to maximize the leverage and the stability that a belt provides. The other person is the person that likes to have fun with their lifts and wants to learn the difference between lifting with a belt and not with a belt. Most people probably, you probably never need to pick up a belt. It probably doesn't really make a big difference. I use a belt because years ago I trained with one and I had fun with it. Until this day, I have fun using a belt, especially if I'm going really heavy. But truth be told, um, I probably would be better off not using a belt and just getting my core to be really good and stable and strong without a belt because it's a totally different uh, muscle recruitment pattern. Stabilizing without a belt is different than stabilizing with, with a belt. Yeah, I would also throw in uh, there, if you're in a competitive athletic environment, mainly because a lot of times, like, and this is my experience and a lot of other athletes' experience, when you're working out with the team and you're in the gym and everybody's in there together, it's just like you're always trying to do more. You're trying to load more. You're trying to uh, really push yourself uh, to, to, to the extremes and, and almost to the, to the point where you come to max load and, and you're doing PRs all the time. So to you know have that as an extra insurance, I could see that being valuable in that environment. Um, but for your average person, uh, for me, I, I like, I like to go for a long time without it. it and, you know, you can experiment, have fun with it and, and whatnot. Um, uh, but to, to find out what you can truly stabilize and what you can truly control means that you actually own that weight. And that's just something I've always stuck with, uh, because my body is going to give me the indication whether or not, like I feel, I, I don't feel like I can, I can brace, uh, that amount of weight, uh, properly. So that's, mm -hmm. that's an indication to me that I need to go down a bit in load. Do you guys remember the last time you used a belt? Uh, I use it's a long time. Ago. I use one at least once a week. Oh, okay. You're yeah. that. You're that. Oh, you're more than me. Then I, you know, I, have I thought. I thought you were less. Actually, I, I went off for a while, and then I, I mean, I have fun with it. I again, I learned. Remember, you know, the story I talk about those tool. powerlifters that taught me how to squat and deadlift. Mm -hmm. They also taught me how to use a belt, and so since I was 16, I've been using a belt on and off. In fact, uh, I had the old belt I wore when I was 16 up until about six years ago, and I gave it to one of my clients when I stopped uh, personal training. But I, it, to me, it's it, there's a different feel around it, maybe some nostalgia. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, if, I mean, training clients, I had Doug wear one sometimes. I had another guy wear one sometimes, but I never had anybody else wear a belt. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know you were using it even that much because I know you're, obviously you don't talk about using it that often. I, I would say I was probably, I thought I was using it the most. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't used it in months just because it's where I'm at right now in my lifting. Where I saw the most value is like when I was competing and, you know, I would just, I, I was doing so much volume that my low back a lot of times would be fried and then I'm getting ready to go do some exercise and I just want to take it out of it. I don't mm -hmm. want I don't want my low back to be the first thing to get fatigue and give out. I'd trained myself to use a belt long enough and so me being able to stabilize and have some external uh, existence with that uh, made it nice when I was lifting. Similar to how I use straps. Straps are the same way too. I just didn't. I didn't see a lot of, of value in using them for overall strength and what like what Justin like tends to train for doesn't make sense to me for somebody like yeah. that unless you're competing but when you're sculpting and you're a bodybuilder and you're trying to isolate parts of the body all the time it, to me i understand where someone like that uses tools like that more frequently than the average person otherwise it can end up being a crutch and the people that tend to gravitate towards using a belt think that they because they have low back issues or problems that they should use a belt and that's mm -hmm. the safer way to go when in reality that person would probably be better off not using a belt yeah that makes a lot of sense actually because you, you know in that in that frame of thought there's a lot of uh, benches and positions and things that they specifically use to give you relief from fatigue so you can just isolate the muscles so to me that seems like a natural but fit bodybuilders wear belts differently than powerlifters do too so yeah. powerlifters will put on a belt heavy lifts bodybuilders put on a belt because they think it it shrinks their waist and so you'll see them wearing a belt to like do all day long yes they're, they're hitting arms and they'll wear yeah, a belt they're yeah, hitting I chest issues with that and they wear a belt um but you know bodybuilding is an aesthetic sport so right. everything revolves around aesthetic and especially at that level it's so, look yeah here's the deal if you're the average person and you want to build muscle and you like to follow a bodybuilding routine that doesn't mean you do the stuff that the advanced bodybuilders do that's a whole different level like 
Are you going to wear a belt and, and to make sure your waist doesn't grow or stuff like that? It's not going to help you no. uh, at that level. Now, if you're a 300-pound bodybuilder, you're on growth hormone and you're on yeah. testosterone. And it's all turned stuff. into an accessory, like a yeah. like a like a clothing accessory. You know, that's yeah. like to you have your name on the back. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you just if you walk into Beast. the if you walk into the gym and you've got your you know, belt over your shoulder and your gallon of water. I mean, you just that was you. Yeah, bro. I mean, you're, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm announcing I'm a bodybuilder. You know, what I'm saying that this, it's it's become it's become that. You know, right? So and you I, had your beats around your neck, right? Yeah, yeah, no, hundred percent. And my stringer, right, underneath yeah. my my Leggings. super thick yeah. oversized sweater. I yeah, because you got to get a pump first. Yeah, right? yeah, so. no, that's all right. And then scare everybody afterwards. Look at that dude over there, oh right? So no, no. I mean, there's to me, it's it's a tool, right? I mean, I think you you're alluding to that, Sal. That yes. it's 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 a tool cool and it has value um but for the for most people you should be training with it as little or as never right or never like yeah. you, there's no reason for you to do it unless you're sport it changes recruitment patterns when you wear a belt your core pushes out, out. against the belt yeah. to stabilize when you don't have a belt your core braces mm -hmm. totally different if you get really good with the belt and you all you ever do is wear a belt when you go out to brace your core in the real world you might find you yourself, yourself having problems mm -hmm. exactly Next question is from CJ Grundy Fitness. What is the most optimal way to rest between sets? Sit and wait, walk around, light stretching, etc. Is there a best way? Not scrolling on Instagram. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, you know what's crazy though? Uh, so I'm guilty of this. I was just like, mm -hmm. so I, I have had a, the last like week and a half, two weeks has been pretty good as far as training again for me. And uh, yesterday I was in here training. And I, I, I've had this habit recently because we're here at work and it, we're our, so much of our business is on, on the phone and online. And, you know, I've catch myself working in between sets, you know, responding to DMs yeah. or emails or whatever, you know, like, and it definitely affects my training. Like it, there's a total difference than when I'm like music, you know, I'm blaring Rage Against the Machine or Tool in my ears. My phone's nowhere next to me. And I'm like, resting is resting. It's, it's like, a total different yeah. space. Years, yeah, I'm lifting. And when I'm lifting, I'm completely focused on the lift. When I'm resting, I'm enjoying every second of the rest because I know I'm about to get after it again. Yeah. And there's a mm -hmm. total different feel of that workout versus, oh, kind of like, you know, going through the whole, uh, the whole, uh, you know, workout with this, eh, I'll get to my set or let me answer mm -hmm. these questions. Oh, wow. That, you know, 90 second rest period turned into a four minute rest period. And, uh, so I mean, for me, I, I, and this is, I think this is an individual thing too, by the way, cause I think there's mm -hmm. value in, you know, doing some dynamic stuff in between as far as stretching and, and, you know, being connected or whatever you want to do in between. But, Personally, uh, I like to be in a zone where I'm completely focused on what I'm doing and not being distracted. It's totally, it's totally individual. It's rest the way that makes you feel best. Now, I'll tell you how not to rest uh, by doing other exercises. Yeah. Um, and that sounds funny, but when I would train clients, uh, especially clients that want to lose body fat, they thought rest was a waste of time. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So they'd be like, oh, can I do something in between? And they don't realize that the rest is part of the workout. That I've the rest seen trainers throw rubber band exercises in between just to kind of maximize the rest. I'm like, they're not resting. I'm glad you brought that, that up because it's actually really common. Yes. Super common. Yeah, it's very common. And part of that is, you know, part of it's the trainer's fault. It's also clients that like demand that, right? Exactly. They're, they're putting pressure on the trainer to do that. No, yeah. no. If you... The the reason why you rest isn't necessarily because you need the rest. I have to take a break because break I can't breathe. That's part of it. Um, but really, the rest is to allow you to train the right energy systems to elicit the, the right response or the right adaptation. If you're lifting weights, the goal that you have is to speed up the metabolism, build muscle, and build strength. That's what your goal is. Now, if your goal is endurance, totally different. But if your goal is... I'm doing this so I can speed up my metabolism. I'm sculpting my body. I'm building muscle. I'm building strength, which is what resistance training does best, better than anything. Then you rest in between because it allows your muscles to replenish their ATP. ATP is the muscle energy that you're training that elicits, that, that, that uh, spurs on the strength and muscle gain. If you don't rest, it becomes glycolytic. You start to end up, you end up burning lots of glycogen and then you might as well just be on a treadmill. Yeah. You're just doing lots of endurance work. So the rest part is a is just as important as the exercise part in terms of the the effectiveness of the programming. Now, in my opinion, I think you should rest however makes you feel best. Now, sometimes that means you sit down 
and catch your breath and allow yourself. When I, you know, when I used to work in gyms, the way that I used to love to rest is I used to do a set. I put my towel on the machine or on the barbell or dumbbell, and then I'd walk to the water fountain. I never had water with me because this is what I would do. I'd walk to the water fountain, get some water, and walk back. And that was always the perfect yeah. amount of rest for me. These days, um, I'm in my garage and I sit on my bench. And I'm now I'm opposite from you, Adam, with what you said. In between uh, rest periods, I don't go on social media necessarily, but I like to write. So I like to write notes and what I'm, what I'm, because when I'm working out, my mind is typically on fire. And so I'll write stuff that I'm going to talk about on the podcast or ideas that I have. And then uh, I have a timer go off. I can see that it's been a minute and a half. Then I go back to my workout and it's the same zone for me. It's not a different uh, space or headspace. If going on your phone takes you out of that, like if you're working out and it's fun yeah. and then you're stressed out because you're on your phone and back and forth, probably not. I've a had thing. to check myself on that quite a few times because I have been pulled into, uh, you know, social media and just like kind of meddling on my phone. And it does get me distracted in my mind in a different place where it's like if I am focused and I'm just truly resting and I'm just trying to now, uh, you know, bring my heart rate down and just listen to my body and. Um, you know, really like for me back in the day when I would train at my best, I was walking and I was really slowly kind of breathing and getting myself recouped and then focusing. Then I would take towards the end of the rest. I'm starting to now visualize that next set that I'm about to perform. And I mean, it's no different than, uh, being out of, of, of a game competing, you know, and I get that one minute to like kind of watch the game. Now I'm going to go right back in and I'm really focused and I'm ready to attack. I also have another example of, uh, what I might do different, like in between sets where, um, if I'm really focused like in squat, this is very common for me with squats, right? I'm still trying to improve my squat, right? I'm still in search of having this, this perfect, beautiful squat, and I'm, I'm still not there, right? Um, some days I'll come in, and, and that is the focus, right? It's just movement focused. I want to I want to keep getting better, better at the movement. And so in between uh, sets, sometimes it's more priming, Right. So like, uh, you know, Sal, you talked about earlier about like the, th the areas, your ankles and your hips and then your upper back that you need to prime for squats. Yeah, this is good. I, I may yeah. I may do all my priming and then get into my squats, but f still feel myself letting the shoulders collapse forward a little bit. And so then between sets, I might be still doing band pull aparts or doing some sort of a row to really, really pump. But it's not a workout. In no, no, yeah. it's not. I'm lightweight or bands, you know, what I'm saying I'm not. And it's not about reps. It's more about being connected to that area. And so. You know, if that day I'm really focused on improving form, especially like I said, if it's a squat day or that's what I'm doing, you might catch me doing things like that in between uh, the movement to improve the movement. So I see value in that if that's what you're focused. And then I also see tons of value in not doing anything and being very focused on the workout when you're trying to get after. I think it really depends on the, the mindset you're coming into the workout with. Next question is from Cha Cha Joseph. Did you guys have a niche when you were personal trainers, or did you just train anyone and everybody? So this so this makes this reminds me of a pet peeve I used to have with new trainers. N new trainers coming into the gym, they want to work for me or whatever, and they'd say things like, "I want to work with uh, athletes," or "My niche is like <laughs> yeah. you're a new trainer, okay?" Single moms only. Yeah. When I <laughs> <laughs> okay, creep. Well, yeah. <laughs> when saying. I when I was a new trainer, okay, my niche was people who wanted personal training. That was it. I didn't yeah. care who you were. Yeah. I didn't care what your goal was. I'm a new trainer. I'm trying to build my business. I didn't start focusing on a niche until I became much more experienced, until uh, I started to have more value in the market in the sense that I used to get a lot of referrals. Then, I, then when I got to the point where I could say no to people and I had a, uh, this reputation, that's when I started to have my niche. And the people I enjoyed training the most really – I love training everyday people always. Uh, athletes were cool, but I like everyday people. I loved training people in advanced age. That was probably my favorite. And selfishly, it's because in between sets, uh, the conversations I would have with these people who were in their 60s, 70s, and 80s was just phenomenal. There's so mm. much wisdom. I, think I you, also like to see them progress and their mm. lifestyles change. That was really awesome. But in the beginning, I don't have a niche. I, like, I, I don't think. I think you should change the way you're saying that too. I think it's less of that you you liked it, more of it that you were good at it. 
And I think that's I think that's how you find your niche. Like I mean, yeah. I would you work your way towards your niche, right? And and I I think it's not I think it's something that subconsciously kind of happens, right? Like that's I that's a good point. I, I I would like to have thought that my niche was going to be sports. You know, because I like sports, I like training for sports myself. I liked athletes. I followed all that stuff, and so I thought I would be great with them. I, I wasn't great with athletes. That's, that wasn't my. I, I, I or else I would have had a ton of them, right? I ended up being like really good with like this middle aged, uh, you know, CEO like high performer, type high a. high stress type A personality. Um, I didn't go into it thinking that. What ended up happening was I hit it out the park with a few of those clients, and then those ones start referring other mm -hmm. friends like them. Before you knew it, all of a sudden I had my my schedule filled with a majority of that client. That's a great point. It's well, like you're, it's like you don't find your niche; your niche ends up finding you. That's the thing, and it, yeah, I mean, very similar to that uh, demographic was it, it was the best client that was the most consistent that paid me the most, and I could actually make a business around it. So it actually shifted my focus because i was that guy that wanted the athletic you know the athletic training only and that would be like awesome in my dream to have like a facility where i just train these crazy athletes and pro athletes and all this kind of stuff which was great but also like what was i was attracting and what was available uh was this like really type a like i i want the most effective efficient uh, type of a workout and, and, and schedule as possible. And I need you to be able to help me with this. Uh, and here's what I have. And they were like the best for me. So I just went more in that direction. Eventually it was just like, that's right there for me. And, you know, I have to put my own interests sort of over here to, to understand that this is really what's available. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny because I'd say the, a lot of trainers, when they become trainers, the niche that I think is popular with trainers is athletes because mm -hmm. they they themselves are probably athletes or fitness fanatics or and booty models yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're thinking i'm going to i'm going to become a trainer and i'm going to train athletes probably the hardest niche i can think of because if you're training young athletes they don't have money and then if you're training uh, high level athletes they usually don't pay for training like yeah. if you're if you're a pro yeah. athlete they have trainers knocking down the door to train them oh, for I got free. Stories, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some douchebag uh, uh, pro players that uh, there are a lot of them out on on their payments. Oh yeah, a lot of them are like that because yeah. they get so much stuff Annoying. for so much stuff for free. They they think because they have this big name that that's a great opportunity for you to get your name out there. So train me for free. So yeah, no, I'm with you guys. I mean, I, and for sure you, Justin, like that. I thought that that was my dream. If you asked me at you know 1920 when I was first getting into it, like. Oh, one day I want to be the you know the trainer for the Giants, you know, like <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, you wanted to be a trainer for a pro sports team, and again, like you, Sal, I I took anybody and everybody. You know, when you're trying to build your business and you're starving and you're trying to pay the bills, uh, you obviously should take everybody you possibly can whenever you can, and then over time you refine your schedule, and you then again your niche finds you. It really did. I had I had no clue it was going to be that, nor did I want that. I didn't think I didn't go like oh this yeah I really like training these people it's i i did well with them you know they and I, maybe because i connected and i related to them really well or i had a lot of the right answers for those types of people mm -hmm. and they began to refer more and more clients and before you knew it this became you know my niche but i don't think you should start as a trainer trying to find like what uh, my niche is gonna no, be. no if you're trying to build your business especially if you're a younger trainer and you don't have a whole bunch of other responsibilities um, you train anybody and everybody and uh, to build your business. I mean, when I first started, you know, of course I was a kid, but I remember, you know, I worked in gyms that were open uh, 24 fitness. So I was open 24 hours and I it used to, we it used to trip me out that there were, uh, you know, I'd go to the fitness manager. I remember at the time and I'd say, does anybody need a trainer? And they'd be like, oh yeah, there's these three people. One of them wants to train at 10 o'clock at night. This one wants to work out at 4 a.m. And this one wants to work out at 5 a.m. I took them all. And no trainer wanted to train them. <laughs> yeah, and I, I remember know. thinking how crazy that was. Like yeah. all these trainers over here talking about building their business, there's three clients they don't want to take because they don't like the time. Like I'll take those clients. Right. And I just trained everybody, everybody I possibly could. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. So you can find us on YouTube. Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on social media. You can find us on Instagram and now also on Parlor. Uh, we're under the names Mind Pump Justin for Jun Justin, Mind Pump Sal for Sal, Mind Pump Adam for Adam, and Doug is under Mind Pump Doug. In the real world, when you're lifting and moving things, none of them are attached to cables. None of them are on a track. 
None of all of them are free. If you pick up a box, you move a couch, you pick up your girlfriend when you give her a hug, whatever. All these things are free moving in the real world. And so even if uh, and I'm making and this is not true, but I'll 